What is wrong with you? Happy birthday. Oh, thanks. So it's been a whole year since I started recording videos for you all. And for anybody who's watched one of my videos, thank you so much. It means a huge amount to me. Making videos makes me so happy. And seeing you lot enjoying them too makes it even better. So nine killer products that I use every time I pick up a brush. This is stuff I use every day. Stuff that makes my painting life a little bit easier. The pick of the crop for me is between this one and number nine. So you'll have to stay around to the end of the video and find out what number nine is. But I've tested three water pots this year. And this may come as a bit of a surprise, but this is the cheapest and the simplest of all of those. But that's why it's so good. It's a paint cup made by Faber and Castle. It costs six pounds for two and comes in a variety of colors. And as with all the products in the video, you'll find the links down in the description below. The reason it's up there for me though, is because it's just extremely good at what it does. It's made from plastic wrapped silicon and it feels nice and tough when you're using it, unlike some of the cheaper plastic ones you can get. The lip has a wavy edge, which means your brush doesn't roll off. As a neat bonus, it folds down flat when you don't need it, which is perfect if you've got a small space or you move around a lot. And as a piece de resistance, the edge of the lip is sharp, so you can wipe off any excess water if tapping didn't do it for you. I think it's probably the perfect paint cup. Numbers two and three stick with the cleaning theme. We've got brush soap and metal mixing pots. Now I know what you're thinking. Ah, James, you're really gonna spend the next 30 seconds of my life talking about brush soap? Yes, I am. Seriously though, paint in your bristles, Rex brushes. All you need is a couple of little drops of Chroma brush soap in a little container, perhaps a metal one. See what I did there? Two in one. Add some water and rinse. A pot like this costs about nine pounds and in a year I've used maybe 10% of it. If that's too much, you can use makeup brush cleaner or even just normal household shampoo. They work just fine. But what makes this brush soap really good is that you can use it to clean oils too. So you don't have to use white spirit to clean your brushes. Simple, quick, game changer. And those little metal dishes? They cost six quid for 24 and I use them to mix paints for metallics or to make thinned mixes for my airbrush. When you're done, rinse and dry. Quick tip though, buy the ones with a pouring lip that are linked below. It's so much less messy to pour paint into your airbrush if you do. Number four is one of the bigger ticket items on here. At £25 for the little one and £33 for the bigger one, the Redgrass Games wet palette has been talked about a lot, but for good reason. It's well made, it's solid, and it comes with so many membranes in the box, you're gonna to struggle to use them all in 2022. If a wet palette isn't part of your workflow in 2022, then I'm gonna go as far as to say it should be. I don't have a wet palette review video on the channel just yet because I've backed both the Game Envy and the Redgrass Games version two wet palettes on Kickstarter and they haven't arrived yet. But rest assured that when they do, they're getting tested and compared to within an inch of their life and both the videos will show up here at some point in the future. I'm hoping for the end of February for the Game Envy one and some point towards the end of March, maybe beginning of April for the Redgrass Games version two. But we'll have to see. Both of those palettes are available for pre-order and if you do want to pre-order either one, the links are of course down below. That being said, there are plenty of brands of wet palette out there, all of which are well reviewed on YouTube, so go and check them out. Or if the cost's just a little bit too much, you can make your own. My favourite DIY wet palette video is by Marco Frasoni, and again I'll put the links to that down below. Number five and six, another double whammy for you. This is a tattoo water dropper bottle apparently, but whatever it's called, it costs about five pounds and makes adding water to pretty much anything, but particularly a wet palette or an airbrush, really, really simple. Seriously, before this I used a cup or a tap, like some sort of animal. It's only a simple thing, but not being able to break your flow is an absolute godsend. I mainly use mine for rinsing my airbrush though. Squirt, swill, rinse, repeat. So fast and cleaning my airbrush isn't that much of a chore anymore. To fill it, use number six, deionized water. If you live in a soft water area, this isn't as relevant, but if you live in Northern France or the South of England, then you can avoid chalky residues by simply using deionized water. Pick it up using the links below or from any car spare shops for a few dollars. It'll last well over a year and it'll replace tap water completely. Lucky number seven is a color wheel. Analysis paralysis is a real thing. 
So use a colour wheel to help you make decisions about what colours you want to put on your minis. So say you want to choose the colour blue. A colour wheel will tell you that orange is a really good contrast paint for that, or that red and yellow make great accents. It's tried, it's tested, it works. Not just that. Understanding the relationship between colours is essential to your learning journey as a painter. The better you can understand the breakdown, the more interesting your painting can become. But even as a basic guide, a colour wheel guides you step by step through the decision making processes you need to make around colour. This is a colour map. Simple enough, but from paint spills to hot glue to soldering and more, this little thing has saved me so much time cleaning up it is not true. My only regret is not getting a bigger one. An A3 one like this costs about £10, but an A1 version costs £30, and that extra real estate is well worth it. Now lots of YouTubers, including me, are quite apologetic when it comes to making airbrush videos, or using airbrushes in videos, and I'm not entirely sure why. For sure there are barriers of entry when it comes to using airbrushes, but there's no need to be apologetic in a video like this, which is literally about the things that made the most difference to me and my painting in the last year. 2021 for me was definitely the year that airbrushing just clicked. I bought a better airbrush, the Badger Patriot 105 Extreme. I used it a lot and it changed the way I paint in the best way. By removing the tedious primes and bases and adding in fun steps like zenitals, for sure, it will never replace a brush but it's easily one of my favourite tools. This is the extreme version of the Patriot. It has a different grip, a smaller needle, and a taller trigger, as well as an easy clean coating, all of which I love. But best of all, it's only around £100 to buy. Sure, there are fancier brushes, but I've never found anything that I wanted to do that I couldn't do with my Badger. That sounds dirty. Now for the last minute, I want to rapid fire through some products that almost made the cut, but for one reason or another, didn't quite. But before I do that, I just want to ask a quick favour. Today, the channel is a year old, and I'm always blown away by the support I receive from you lot. But if you haven't already, consider subscribing to the channel so you know what's coming up next. And please always like the videos, comment down below. It really helps the AI that runs YouTube find the video and therefore share it with other people so they can enjoy the content too. I really appreciate you guys, thank you so much. Also, as a bonus for folks from the USA, I've partnered up with Umbrella Games and can now offer anybody who uses the code RISINGAPE or clicks in the links down below a 5% discount on anything they purchase from the store. I do receive a small kickback from that, but that doesn't cost you anything extra and hopefully that's just a bit of a win-win. For the folks from the UK, you can use the links to support me down at Element Games. I haven't arranged a discount yet. I'm something I'm working on I still appreciate you guys. Hopefully I'll get something sorted in the future. Thank you. Right, rapid fire, number one, baking soda. Super glue won't set, need to glue shiny plastic, add glue, sprinkle baking soda, it sets instantly like cement. It's great for basing or models that need to look a little bit weathered. Number two, Tamiya Extra Thin Cement. It's not much different from the standard stuff, but the applicator is loads better. One more information, click in the top right. Number three, the Red Grass Games painting handle. It fits snugly in your hand, the top spins like a mini painting fidget spinner. It's just a joy to use, and the only reason it's not in the top nine is because I mainly paint larger scale models. Number four, cheap synthetic brushes. Use them, abuse them, worry-free painting. Use better brushes for the details when you need them. Talking about better brushes, the Pro Synthetic from Monument have become my go-to. Want to find out why? Open the link in the top right hand corner in a new tab. And finally, paints. Chimera, no surprises there. Games Workshop Contrast Paints and Golden High Flows are also my most used brands of 2021. But let's see what 2022 brings. If you want to know why Chimera paints are my favorite paints, you should check out one of these two videos next. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.